Before Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales and Peter Parker first met in Marvel's limited series, Spider-Man. And you can see some clear inspiration for Into the Spider-Verse, Far From Home, and No Way Home from this comic. Back in 2012, the characters existed in two separate realities. Parker lived in the primary Marvel continuity, while Miles Morales existed in an alternate continuity, called Ultimate Marvel. The two worlds had a couple of important differences. In Peter's reality, Gwen Stacy was killed when the Green Goblin threw her off the Brooklyn Bridge. Peter caught her with his web, but the whiplash of the sudden stop killed her. In Miles' world, Gwen Stacy is alive, but Peter Parker recently died at the Goblin's hands, and the world now knows he was Spider-Man. The two realities were always kept separate until a very special story came along. One of my favorites. This is Spider-Man. During an evening patrol of the city, Peter Parker spots a strange light in the distance. As always, he keeps a sense of humor even in his own internal monologue, thinking, okay, that was weird? Yes, so by all means, let's swing towards the weird. He arrives at the light's source, an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. He sneaks inside and thinks to himself, if this is a surprise party for me, I told those silly Avengers, I hate surprises. He approaches the light and finds it emitting from a strange device. Then, he looks around the room and spots a familiar fishbowl helmet, the one belonging to Mysterio. Oh no, not him, Peter thinks. I hate this guy. Suddenly, his spider sense activates, and the special effects artist turned supervillain is behind him. They fight, and Peter traps Mysterio in his webs, then asks him about the device and the strange light coming from it. Rather than answer, Mysterio manages to just barely grab his gun and fire it. Peter dodges, and instead Mysterio's blast strikes the device. It explodes in a whirlwind of energy. No! Mysterio shouts, as Spider-Man fades into the light. Suddenly, Peter stands on the rooftop, and it's no longer night. He swings back into the building, but finds it is no longer an abandoned warehouse, and that he's swung into a woman's apartment. She shouts for him to get out, and Peter swings off. Well, at least she talked to me, so that's a step up from the last woman I met, he thinks. Then spots a mugging in progress. Peter stops the thieves, and the victim thanks him, but adds, Wow, no offense, but that costume is in terrible taste. We need all the heroes we can get, but that was Peter Parker's. You really shouldn't be wearing it. Peter is shocked by what he's heard. How could this person know his identity? He frantically swings off in search of answers, and suddenly finds himself face to face with another Spider-Man, this one dressed in a black and red costume, as opposed to Peter's red and blue. Meanwhile, on the other side of the portal, Mysterio sends a remote-controlled avatar of himself through the portal to follow Peter. On the rooftop, the two Spider-Men stare at each other in confusion. Is this a clone thing? Peter asks. What's a clone thing? The other Spider-Man replies. The two struggle as each demands answers from the other, but Peter quickly learns that this new Spider-Man has abilities that he doesn't, like his Venom Sting, which knocks Peter out with a quick shock to his neck. The other Spider-Man begins to unmask the unconscious hero, but Peter wakes and warns, I don't know how long you've been doing this, but unmasking is a big superhero no-no. Peter catches the kid in his web and unmasks him then falls for the venom sting again. And as the two plummet toward the street below, the boy uses the once again unconscious hero's web shooter to bring them to safety. Then unmasks him to find a somehow alive and older Peter Parker. Unsure what to do next, he calls Nick Fury. Peter wakes up in a cell and finds a man who calls himself Nick Fury staring at him. Though he resembles Samuel L. Jackson more than he resembles the man Peter knows as Nick Fury. Are you Peter Parker? Fury asks. Peter is unsure how to answer and instead asks his own long-winded question. If you were a pretty well-known superhero who had put just a lot of effort and thought and time in concealing your secret identity because you feared for the safety of your loved ones, but all of a sudden found yourself in a situation where suddenly your real name seems fairly well established and your mask was off, and then you ran into a teenage African-American version of your 
well, self, and now you are talking to a, well, frankly, much cooler version of the Nick Fury than you were used to talking to, and you were pretty sure, after you had some time to think it over, that you may have either A, had a complete psychotic break, B, are being tricked by a former movie stuntman turned supervillain into thinking this is all real, or C, have accidentally transported to an alternate dimension that slightly resembles the one you're from, if not for the gigantic differences. What would you do? Oh, that old nugget, Fury replies. Then he formally introduces Peter to the new Spider-Man, 13-year-old Miles Morales. He tells Miles to take Peter and show him what happened to their world's Peter Parker, while Fury himself will try and figure out what caused the dimension rift that brought Parker here. Miles and Peter leave on a helicopter. Peter apologizes for the earlier dust-up, then asks, Kid, tell me, is Peter Parker dead? There is a tense silence, and before Miles can answer, the helicopter explodes. Miles grabs the pilot, and Peter grabs Miles, as he saves them from falling with his web shooter. Then, they spot the source of the artillery which took them down, Mysterio's avatar. They battle the remote-controlled Mysterio, but quickly find themselves trapped inside an illusion, surrounded by holograms of past foes. Don't sweat it, kid, Peter says to Miles. These are just illusion, little tricks. This is what he does. This is classic Mysterio nonsense that Peter suddenly finds that somehow the holograms can harm him physically. Never mind, I was wrong, he shouts. The two Spider-Men struggle against the onslaught of past villains, until Miles manages to reach the Avatar himself. He kicks Mysterio's robot to the ground. Then he and Peter realize what's going on. Mysterio has combined his illusions with a fierce chemical component. He's pulling our fears out of our head and hitting us with them, Peter shouts, because he's a jerk that way. Miles starts tearing out wires from the Mysterio bot, and back in Peter's homeworld, Mysterio says, Maybe I was going about this all wrong. Attacking you is too pedestrian. His voice transmits through the avatar, but sticking you there with no way home, banishing you in a world that thinks you're dead. Mysterio works on disassembling the portal device, while Miles disassembles his avatar. Peter tries to stop Miles, warning that he doesn't know how Mysterio's tech works. But he's too late. As Miles pulls wires, the avatar explodes. Miles wakes to find the Ultimates, his world's Avengers, standing over him. Stark explains that he was monitoring the situation and rushed over as soon as Peter and Miles' helicopter was attacked. Stark examines Mysterio's tech, while Miles wonders where Peter ran off to. Ain't it obvious, kid? Fury says. He doesn't know if any of this is real, so he's going to find out for himself. How is he going to do that? Miles asks. It ain't going to be pretty, Fury answers. And Peter's inner thoughts match Fury's. This ain't going to be pretty, he tells himself. Peter tries to investigate aspects of his personal life, things Mysterio wouldn't know about and couldn't fake. He visits Aunt May's home, where, in this world, unbeknownst to Peter, she fosters a girl, Gwen Stacy, the girl who Peter loved and lost in his world. May and Gwen spot the man in a Spider-Man costume on their front lawn. They're furious at this stranger's audacity, flaunting the memory of Peter Parker in front of them. How dare you! Get out of here, you lunatic! Aunt May shouts, and Peter removes the mask, to show his tear-stained face. May and Gwen are shocked at the ghost in front of them. Aunt May, Peter stammers. And you, oh man, you're Gwen Stacy. You're so, you're so young. The grieving May slaps Peter, and Gwen attacks him, until Miles shows up to explain what's happening. Once they're calm, Peter apologizes, explaining that he wasn't thinking. He didn't actually expect to see any of them, and he shouldn't have come. I'm sorry I came here, he says. You didn't deserve this on any level. Then Aunt May faints. Later, Gwen calls Mary Jane to tell her everything that's happened. And when Aunt May wakes, she finds Gwen and Miles telling Peter stories about their Peter, like the time Peter switched bodies with Wolverine. And Gwen asks if there is a Gwen on Peter's world. Yes, Peter answers, but doesn't share much else. Then, Gwen asks if Peter is dating his Gwen, and when he hesitates, she rolls her eyes and adds, You're dating MJ, aren't you? Is, is there an MJ here? 
Peter asks. They talk about MJ, and Gwen is shocked to learn she's a supermodel where Peter is from. With things finally calm, May hugs Peter, tearfully accepting this grown version of the boy she lost. The fun is interrupted when Nick Fury shows up. Before leaving, Peter tells May that he changed his mind. Now, I'm really glad we did this. He hugs May and Gwen goodbye, and as he leaves, sees a certain red-haired girl who runs when she's spotted. The girl, MJ, quietly sobs after seeing the ghost of the boy she loved. Fury brings Peter to a lab where Tony Stark is at work, trying to reverse engineer Mysterio's suit. Peter observes that this Tony is a lot like the one he knows, though on Peter's world, Tony gave up drinking a while back. I like yours more already, Fury adds. Then they refocus on the task at hand. Let me take a look, Peter offers. You some kind of scientist? Tony asks. Some kind. Any good? You hired me, Peter answers, referring to the Tony Stark of his world. Meanwhile, Miles reviews some ranting videos from Mysterio that he's been posting on the web, part of his attempt to build a new criminal network in this alternate reality. Miles suggests they can find his secret hideout based on the background of those videos, and Fury does exactly that, then sends a battalion led by two Spider-Men to get Mysterio. Before fully destroying the portal, Mysterio can't help but leave it open just a bit longer so he can have a look at Peter Parker's fate in the new world. But suddenly, webs fire out of the portal and pull Mysterio through it. In the other world, he finds two Spider-Men and the Ultimates waiting for him. They subdue the villain and Peter prepares to take him back through the portal. Peter tries to find some profound parting words for Miles and Miles suggests, with great power comes great responsibility? You know that one? Peter asks. Yeah, Miles says. Well, Peter replies, that's all I got. But before he can leave, Mysterio sets off an explosion and releases more of his mind-altering drug. Suddenly, each of the heroes suffer hallucinations of their worst fears. Peter watches his aunt killed by Doc Ock, and Miles sees his parents dead by his villainous uncle's hands. As Mysterio walks toward the portal to return to his world, Miles fights through the illusion and tackles Mysterio through the portal. Miles and Mysterio fight in Peter's world, then Miles kicks him through the portal again, and they continue their fight back in Miles' reality. Then, with a venom blast, Mysterio is finally defeated. Fury arrests Mysterio, and they decide they'll hold the villain there, in Miles' world. Since Mysterio now knows Spider-Man's identity, it would be dangerous to let him return to Peter's world. Peter finally prepares to leave, but first, he thanks Miles for keeping the Spider-Man legacy going. And Miles asks, So you're cool with it? Entirely, Peter replies. I have your, you know, your... Miles struggles to find the words, but Peter finishes his question. My blessing? Absolutely. Peter heads to the portal, just before it becomes unstable and closes. Fury puts a hand on Miles' shoulder. So you got his blessing. You earned it, kid. Now you have to keep earning it. Then, Miles swings off with a newfound confidence. Back home, Peter wonders if his world has a Miles Morales. He types the name into Google and is shocked at the results. And that's where Spider-Man wraps up. All in all, it's a pretty small story, but I always enjoyed how heartfelt it is. With the reunion between Peter and Gwen, and with Miles seeking Parker's approval, which he never got from the dead Parker of his world. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this comic in the comments, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. If there's interest, I'd love to make more videos like this one, covering the many other awesome Spider-Man comics out there, maybe even picking up on this cliffhanger. So make sure to let me know if you want to see more. With that, thank you for watching, and see you on the next One Take.